Edward Frankel's mathematical masterpiece, Love and Math, has captivated readers worldwide since its 2013 release. As Taiwan awaits the Mandarin edition this month, we ask Frankel how mathematics serves as a crucial foundation in our rapidly evolving AI world. I think no one would deny how much mathematics affects us these days. It has been affecting us more and more through technology, social media, financial instruments like blockchain and the cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin. And more recently, through all kinds of AI systems that have become so widespread, like ChatGPT and so on. So it has been gratifying, I, I could say, for me to see that what I en envisioned, what I anticipated in 2013 is kind of materializing in our world today. And my admonition, so to speak, to my readers to get to know mathematics more, to get acquainted with it so that mathematics is our friend and not our foe is important and is becoming increasingly more important. But on the other hand, I'm also more and more concerned about misuse of mathematics, misuse of mathematical tools. Frankel's remarkable transformation from mass skeptic to passionate advocate began with an unexpected encounter that forever changed his educational path. I actually, when I was in high school, in fact, I did not hate math because I didn't know what mathematics was about. I thought mathematics was just what we were being taught at school. And I did not have anyone to guide me into this bigger world of mathematical ideas. I was lucky that in the last year of, of high school, I met a mathematician in, who was a friend of my parents. And he explained to me that to truly understand physics, to truly understand the universe, the laws of nature, you have to first understand mathematics. And he showed me what mathematics is about, that it is much vaster and much more fascinating than most people realize. And I would say every child is a mathematician. Every child is a mathematician. And the question is to preserve that curiosity, preserve that sense of awe and the sense of excitement. I don't see my job as making everybody into a mathematician. That people cannot enjoy the subject um, without being professional mathematicians or without dedicating their lives to it the way I have dedicated my life. And my hope is more people will realize that mathematics is just like that. It is also part of our culture. It is also part of our humanity. It's part of our history. The Berkeley professor also argues that genuine mathematical thinking remains uniquely human. He believes the true beauty of mathematics exists not in final answers, but in the discovery process itself. Math is not about answers. It's about the process of discovery. It's about the process of learning and collaboration. And computers, we have to use them as tools the same way as an artist uses a brush and paint and canvas, but is not expecting the brush to paint it for himself or herself. You see, same way ChatGPT can help me to um, get, get information to, uh, faster than I could ever do before. But I should not imagine that it somehow will replace the actual process of discovery, the actual process of learning. And that's what I would like to impart on my students. And that's what I would like the readers of my book to impart on their children. Because this new generation is coming up who, you know, may be very tempted, if you will, to just kind of like take the shortcut. Early in his academic career, Frankel encountered antisemitism that threatened his future. Yet, through mathematics, he discovered profound resilience. His inspiring journey shows us how combining passion with perseverance can overcome seemingly impossible barriers. We are living in challenging times and um, I am indeed concerned about my students, whether you know, certain p political decisions might kind of drive them away from pursuing, pursuing science. However, I am reminded also of my own upbringing. I, I also face challenges. I was not accepted to Moscow University, which was the only program in Moscow in pure mathematics on bogus pretenses because I was told that I come from a Jewish family and therefore I'm undesirable. So I was failed at my exams. It looked like there was no opportunity for me to become a mathematician. And yet I persevered. 
On the other hand, I also know that sometimes challenges actually push us, push us to transcend our limits or what we believe to be our limits. You know, a, a great French mathematician philosopher, Blaise Pascal, who lived in 17th century, said, the heart has its reasons of which the reason knows nothing. The heart has reasons of which the reason knows nothing. My personal life is a proof that when you follow your heart, you will succeed no matter what, no matter what uh, you know, obstacles life puts in your way, you will persevere, you will succeed, and that, that success will be even sweeter. This is Dimitri Boyaz in Taipei for TVBS World Taiwan.